Hello, my snacks. Welcome back. My name's Jack. Hey, question for you. Would I be the a-hole if I blamed you all for my business failures? Sorry, let me rephrase that. Would I be the a-hole for asking my family and friends why they don't support my business? Or as r slash am I the devil puts it, my friends and family won't commit embezzlement to fund my poorly thought out business idea! Yeah, it's a good time. I started a new business this year. Basically, I've been trying to open a restaurant, and I just haven't had enough money to open it up, and my credit is bad, so I can't get loans. I had all of these plans written up, and I talked with a lot of financial advisors and other people who ran successful businesses, but what seems to be holding me back is capital. I just don't have it, and my Kickstarter hasn't even gotten close to the goal. What bothers me is I know that a lot of my friends have good jobs and make a lot of money, but they don't even buy the meals and baked goods that I sell from my house. I have family members that have business credit cards with crazy limits, but they wouldn't even let me use those to help fund my restaurant. I know I'm not entitled to anyone's money, it just makes me feel like nobody actually believes in me. If they really did, then they would invest. That's just how I feel. To clarify, I have asked about two friends and family members this year. One just said no. One said their money is tied up in their assets. Now before you want to give some pity to the OP here, like, oh, he's just a struggling underdog trying to make his way in the world, I request you save such pity for someone who's actually using their brain about this. As this comment points out all the flaws here. No demand for their food, no business management or financial literacy skills, seemingly no culinary training, no money, and no investors. Meanwhile, OP. I'm gonna open up a restaurant and make big bucks! It's telling that they seemingly haven't considered farmers markets or food pop events. Jump straight to a restaurant with no training, skills, resources, or customers. Yeah, and their primary motive? I don't want to keep working a regular job. I don't know what the frick they think business owners do in terms of hours, but it's typically a schmidt load more than their employees work. You don't clock off at 5pm and put your feet up. It's a 7 day, near round the clock job operating a startup and the restaurant industry is hellish for burnout. And as Need More Snakes here says, it's very true. Most restaurants fail, if not within six months, within about five years. It is a very consistently changing industry. And look, Nick, I don't mean to dump on this guy's dreams of business ownership, but I struggle to pity a man who's tried to dive into an ocean before they've learned to swim. Over to relationship advice now, where we meet someone who's equally just throwing themselves to the wolves. Guy's girlfriend called me up and warned me to stay away from him, but I don't want to. Oh my gosh, you're physically and emotionally cheating on your girlfriend for me? <laughs> Prince Charming! I really, really like this guy. Me and him are both trash. I mean, professional tennis players, and he told me he was single, and we got together, and it was amazing. Now, it turns out, he has a psycho ex who he got back with and lives with. Hmm, what a catch. A man who's clearly using you as a rebound. Anyway, I moved out of state for a while and I'm going back to town tomorrow. His ex called me and warned me to back off, but I really like this guy and want to shoot my shot. But I saw them at an event together and I texted him about my, well, asking about my status with him and he just said, in hindsight, bringing her was a bad idea. I feel sorry for putting you in a position where you feel uncomfortable. The guy texted me later and asked if I want to go on his motorcycle and go swimming. Can I go out with him? He said him and his girlfriend are on the rocks, but they still live together and she has no place to call me and tell me to back off. She does not own him and it's his choice if he wants to go swimming with me. So I'm really confident that the OP here is like 16, maybe, maybe 14? Mentally 10. As Shelly895 eloquently puts it, she's in for a rude awakening once she's the psycho girlfriend that doesn't like him cheating on her with a younger woman. What's exceptionally telling is how she refers to this woman as the ex and then suddenly later, the girlfriend who he's on the rocks with. Oh yes, that's just, mm, I believe, chapter 3 from the uh, cheating D-bag manual? We'll move on now though to a story where the OP is definitely not the a-hole, but the people in this definitely are. Am I the a-hole for staying true to my threats after my dad died? My dad died unexpectedly last week, and my sister Jess and I lost our mum last year to a mix of cancer and the virus. From how our family acted in the past over scavenging over dead people's things, both Jess and I decided to send out a family memo on no one is to enter or take anything from our parents' house until we get there. 
both Jess and I work on the West Coast, so it takes some time to get there with all of our kids and family. Well, I saw several notifications from my parents' ring doorbell, and I'm a lawyer. I reminded my family, we will prosecute. Jess and I are on the same page. Jess gets to my parents' house first, and notices stuff is missing. And my parents had security cameras and an Alexa to show it. It shows my cousin taking stuff from the house. So, Jess did what we agreed on and called the police, and two of our cousins were arrested. Now, because it was over a thousand dollars, both are looking at felonies. My cousin said my dad promised him this stuff, and I have my dad's will making me executor of the estate. I told him he should have waited to file a claim with the estate, and everyone was warned about what would happen. Jess and I don't have the best relationship with our extended family, and we are not dropping charges. Because of this, the drama my dad was quietly cremated with no service, and we planned to hold one when scattered our parents' ashes at Jess's house in a tree planted for them. My last living grandma is upset about it, but she sided with my cousins and aunt, saying we are too tough on having them arrested. And you have to kind of consider, end of the day, what crime exactly is being committed here? Assuming the cousins are in the right here, that it was definitely stuff that was promised to them regardless. Can you blame them for wanting to get in there and grab their things before dealing with the extended family's other scavenging hands? Like, what? rather grab what you know is yours before having to deal with some other cousins or aunt who thinks they're entitled to it as well. But then also, this is their uncle, and the OP is the actual son here. It's their dad's things. Especially as the executor of the will, it's fair to say he has every right to decide how and when these things are handed off. And besides, they told them the consequences of their actions. Can you really blame them for sticking true to their word? And apparently not the first time, as someone's offering their sympathies to such a terrible family dynamic, the OP says, they did this with my grandpa and then my mother. Came out right after her death asking my dad for things. And I'm just noticing their username. I <laughs> Sounds great. But to clear the water, someone does ask about this. Okay, you have the will. Was the cousin really entitled? Were they right to believe and trust that their dad said, hey, you can have this when I pass? OP clarifies, everything goes directly to my sister and I. 60-40, my 10% fee. Everything else is left up to our discretion and 90 days after cremation to make a request of the state. So overall then, what do you think? Think he's absolutely entitled to have pushed for these charges? Or do you think something that is literally putting someone into a criminal record over just the establishment of estate items really valid or just downright petty? Let me know. We'll now move over to Creepy Encounters where this story's title definitely grabbed my attention. With OP being an unfortunate victim to just a-holes, complete a-holes, blackmailed by a cuckold couple, aka a lesson into why you shouldn't just randomly hook up with people on the internet. So for a little while, I was having it on with a woman that I met on Instagram. She randomly messaged me, and things led from one thing to another. She would stop by my place multiple times a week, we would have it on, and then she would leave. Well, one evening, she asked me to come have it on at her place. I pulled up to her place, and she met me at the door in a robe. She took me back to her room by my hand and laid me on her bed. While she was giving me head, she asked me to pull my legs back so she could eat my booty, which she did all the time. But for some reason, this time, she asked me to spread it really wide and put myself at a weird angle while she stared at it. Then she started, yeah, okay, yeah, we get the idea. I didn't think much of it at the time. I thought maybe she was just admiring it. Now, throughout our intimacy, I thought I heard noises, kind of like grunts, like hmm or ugh, a couple of times coming from the closet, which was cracked but pitch black inside. I thought maybe I was hearing things because the sounds were low in volume and she was being loud as always. When we finished, I left and went home. I got a text about 30 minutes later, reading, Hey, would it be okay if my husband eats your butt while we frick? I responded, Didn't even know you had a husband. She replied, Yes, and he really enjoyed finishing himself while I ate your butt. He watched from the closet. I hope you don't mind. Why wouldn't he? I got upset and said, No, I'm not into that kind of thing. I'll talk to you later. She replied, I think we can make you change your mind. At this point, I put my phone down ate dinner, and went to sleep. But the next day, I wake up, get ready for work, walk out to my car, and on my way to open my door, I see a printed picture of the woman I'd been sleeping with spreading my butt wide. 
with a note that said, If you don't want this in every neighbor's mailbox, let's make my husband's fantasies happen. So my whole car ride to work, I'm freaking out and trying to figure out how to handle the situation. I decided to text her and say I'll be over this weekend, but I'm busy during the work week. Just so I could get time to think. I get a text back saying, Great, see you soon. At work, I start getting my phone blown up with cuckold adult videos saying, I really think you'll enjoy this, or ooh, let's give this a try, with videos of husbands sucking men off or getting fricked. At this point, I'm freaking out because I'm not into any of this. Long story short, I start browsing the woman's social media and find her workplace information and her husband's. I send her a text threatening to send the picture and all the screenshots to her job and his as well if they don't stop this. The response was, you'll regret this. I now haven't heard from them in two months. I ended up transferring to another county with company to get away from them. So as a lot of the comments say, yeah, this is revenge porn. Absolutely revenge porn and understandably terrifying. Like, yes, as this comment does also say here, you could reply and be like, so do it. Why not? I don't care. She's the one with her face in your butt, so if anything, that reflects on her. So you're a little freaky. That's really not that out there these days. If she wanted to put herself on blast as a butt muncher, hey, more power to her. Okay, but let's be honest. If any of us were the equal victim in this circumstance, we would equally be freaking out like this. Just because it should be okay for you to have your kinks doesn't mean that you should be okay with people knowing them. I'm sorry this happened to the OP, and honestly, I'm glad they actually talked about it, though, because it's the sort of situation that needs to be heard about more, so people are aware of this kind of thing. Look out for it. Be aware. Honestly, the red flag for me was the fact that she randomly messaged him first. Absolutely insane. Women making the opening message. <laughs> now moving on to the story that actually gives you sympathy for landlords. Am I the a-hole for changing the locks so my landlord can't enter? I'm a 31 male. I have a break and enter charge from trying to enter my ex-girlfriend's place to take back some of the stuff she took when we were breaking up, like my bedding and CDs. And she called the cops and I got unfairly charged and prosecuted. Unfairly charged for breaking and entering. <laughs> now because of this, I couldn't find a place to live, and I also have old DUIs, three years sober, but my insurance for any vehicle is also insanely high to the point it's cheaper to use Ubers to get around. I needed a place near my work and it's been almost impossible to find one. Finally, I found a woman who was renting out a basement suite, but she wanted a non-smoker and asked me three times. I said I didn't smoke because I was desperate for a place and I wouldn't smoke inside, but she came without giving me proper notice. She gave me 15 hours, not 24 hour notice, and saw the cigarette butts on the steps to the place. I was smoking outside and freaked out and demanded I leave. Well, I wanted to sign for a year, but she refused to only sign for three months because my credit was bad. Well, she forced me to let her into my apartment. <laughs> it's not your apartment. <laughs> to check for damage, even though, to reassure her, I didn't do any smoking inside. I did use my brother as a reference because I didn't have great luck with having good relationships with previous landlords, and she found out later he was my brother and threatened legal action for using a fake reference. But he wasn't fake. I did pay rent to him a few years ago. She began checking up on the place every two weeks, claiming she was checking for damage, even though I said I would leave after my lease. Then, I started seeing this girl I was interested in, and we began dating after a few months. The landlord showed up to my place again to inspect the place, and she and my girlfriend started talking, and she told her I had a break and enter and DUI charge. No idea how she found out, and my girlfriend has stopped talking to me because of it. I'm sure it's illegal for her to disclose my personal information like that, and I've changed the locks to my place and refused to get her in. She has sent me a letter starting the eviction process, and I'm sure it will take them months to evict me. It will make it even harder for me to find a place to live in the future. It gets to a point with this kind of person that you kind of just pity them. Dude is just making it worse and worse for themselves. Why can't this landlord just understand I'm clearly a great person? Here, let me change the locks to your own property. Now I believe in the idea that, okay, when you're leasing something, yes, it's your space, your home. As long as you're leasing it, it's your place. I agree that yes, she should have given you more of a proper notice, but she agreed to lease it to you on the idea that you are a non-smoker. The moment you broke that trust, she has every right to break the trust of saying that, hey, you can rent my space. Like, damn dude, she clearly was genuinely giving you a chance. Absolutely abuse that. Like, damn dude, you wonder why you struggle to get a place when you keep doing things like this. How old is the OP again? 
31. You're like 15 years too old to be acting like this. However, as the Carpe points out, in some places, this is actually a very legal and fair right thing for tenants to do. At least in the UK, apparently there is a statutory legal right for tenants to change the locks to keep landlords out. It's something the landlord isn't legally allowed to evict for or even co to complain about. So, maybe this is based in the UK, in which case this guy is literally just doing what he has the right to do. In which case, does it really make them the a-hole? I still think it does, because they have still lied about so many other things. Some people on the other side of the fence, though, think that he's the a-hole for lying, but the landlord is one for disturbing your right to quiet enjoyment of property by conducting invasive and regular checks. But I get why she feels the need to. Oh, okay, so she's not the a-hole? She should have given just you a warning and then began eviction proceedings if you didn't agree. In the UK, this would likely be classed as a harassment under the Housing Act. And okay, valid, yes. She didn't really give him a notice that she was coming in. Well, that was, at least, depending on where you live, fair and right. But also, cigarette butts on the steps of the place? That's not inside. That is outside, in public space or public view. She no doubt would have been able to see it just on the frickin' street. Which then again, breaks the whole agreement, well the original agreement that likely is on the lease saying that you will not smoke in the property, so. It goes back to my original point that yeah, I think she has every right to kick you out, mate. But yes, look, I'm sorry you're going through this. It's such a shame that there are consequences to your actions. Well now I'll move on to a story that got a bit viral over the last few days. With a recent update just a few hours ago. Today I fricked up by being tricked by a straight guy into dating him. So to start things off, I'm gay. I live in a small town in the middle of nowhere USA. I'm a male who's 18. I wasn't ever really bullied for being gay. Unless it was online, everyone was cool with it except the super conservative families in town. Of course, I've heard my fair share of names and threats, but I shrug them off. It's normal to me. There's this group of boys who are like the super bro dude straight guy group of the school. They act more gay than I do, but still call me names, etc. In this group, there's this guy I'll call Skylar. Skylar is my age, looks like a puppy dog, and was very sweet to me always, but always presented as straight. Which is why I was shocked when he asked me out this summer. I mean, I'm not ugly or anything. I just didn't expect this super dude bro jock to ask me out. But our first date was amazing. I mean, it was on the 4th of July at our state fair. We got corn dogs, played games, and he kissed me on the Ferris wheel. After a few dates, we had gotten a lot closer. We never had intimacy though. He wanted to wait, and I respected that. My ex-boyfriend's birthday was on October 20th. He had this huge party and invited everyone. And of course, I wasn't shocked when he invited me. This is where I was stupid. I was head over heels for this guy. I was like stupid in love with him. I mean, I'd get giddy every single time I saw him and I'd get butterflies in my chest whenever he touched me, even after three months. I was in love with him. I think part of me still is, which is why I'm heartbroken writing this. I bought my boyfriend Skylar this beautiful pendant and chain. It was 18 karat gold with a diamond. Very expensive, cost me two years of working part-time at McDonald's. I was very excited to give this to him. At his party, he brushed me off the entire time. I gave him his gift and a letter that I wrote from the bottom of my heart. I thought we were forever. Oh, turns out it was all a lie. He started getting giggly with his friends reading the letter, and when he finished, he was crying laughing. That's when he started explaining that it was all a dare, and that he only went out with the town F slur to win a bet. He thanked me for the necklace and went on with his party. I've stayed home for several days now. I'm heartbroken and just devastated. I thought this boy was the absolute love of my life. Turns out all his friends were in on everything to the text messages and the letters we would write to each other. We were on the down low because he said he wasn't ready to tell his family he was bi. This was already a red flag I ignored because his mum is bi and uh, would have been completely fine with it. But this entire time, he tricked me. He broke my heart into pieces and I can't help but scream into my pillow. I want to hurt him the way I was hurt. I want to hear him scream the gut-wrenching screams late at night when the earth is quiet into my pillow so my family can't hear me. I can't go back to school. 
I am already the laughing stock on social media. I'm thinking of switching schools and going to live with my aunt. I was blinded by love and hurt. So yeah, straightforward, absolute scummy a-hole D-bank that deserve nothing less than to be castrated. Okay, maybe not that far, but you know, maybe not. Some people have some theories though. No one dates someone for three months on a dare. I'm guessing someone called him a slur because of his sexuality, so he made the dare story up to save face to his bigot friends. Regardless, it's very schmitty behavior and you deserve better. Yeah, it's exactly this. Or he's playing hell of a long con, especially with the kissing. He's also a kid, confused sexually, and buckled to close-minded peer pressure. Yeah, dude's gay, 100% likely cannot admit to it, feels bad about what he did, but is choosing friends and reputation over what he likely wants. I think regardless of this person's possible inner conflict, he still deserves nothing less to be absolutely shamed for it. Which thankfully, in the update, such sort of happens. So for everyone commenting and asking about my parents, my dad has been very supportive throughout the whole process. My mom, however, has been rather distant about everything. Everything. She doesn't really like the LGBTQ community, but has tried changing her views with me. I guess it's all I can ask of her. At first, I thought it would be better to go over to his house and to confront his mother. My dad was willing to go along with me, but I couldn't really bear to see him. I was very nervous at first when I messaged Skylar's mom on Facebook last night. I mean, she didn't believe me in the beginning. She never thought her son could do something so horrible. I sent her some of our photos and messages. She didn't reply for a bit, but would later call me. I explained everything from July to now. She was quiet for a long time after I finished. I mean, I was still sniffling through the phone. She asked me if I still loved her son. I mean, I was crying almost the entire time because I am still in love with him. I mean, how can you go from loving someone so easily to hating them the next? Like, isn't that ironic? Those we love can do the most horrible things to us, yet we still find a way to care about them. So I told her yes. She would then tell me she experienced something similar with a guy. How he was dared to lead her on for a few weeks. How she knew how I felt because she felt the same way at the time. She learned to let go. She would then go on to talk with me for an hour or two about how things were between us. Everything felt surreal after that. She would then message me later that night that she isn't able to force her son to give the necklace back, but she's terribly sorry and that Skylar is staying at his dad's for the time being. Probably extremely upset about it. The main reason the divorce happened, from what Skylar told me, is that his dad couldn't really accept his mom. I felt terrible then, but it felt good getting everything out to someone so close to him. I don't want to talk to him yet, yet I do. I want my necklace back. I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna get it back. I might have to cross post on r slash legal advice. I mean, technically it was a gift. As expensive as it was, I understand how immature it was of me to spend so much on a gift, but I didn't really care at that time about the cash. I stayed home from school today, but I think I'm gonna confront him tomorrow at school. Not in front of his friends, not in front of the class or anything like some teenage rom-com from Disney, but I am gonna try to find some time alone. Does anyone have any advice? And for everyone telling me it wasn't love, it felt like love. But everyone telling me that I wasn't in love is weird. Like, I would have rather died than someone to hurt him. I would have done anything for him. And even now, even after all the hurt that I've been given, the slurs, the hate, the lies, I still don't want to see him hurt. I still see his smile. I can still feel the sweet gestures and hear our conversations. Now, I posted this last night, but deleted it because of developments. Uh, basically, Skylar and a few of his friends were just Schmidt talking me on social media on Instagram Live, calling me slurs, saying that I lied to his mum about stuff. Uh, advice would be appreciated. I'll update you. And despite this horrible treatment, it's nice to see that a lot of their OP's replies to comments are from people offering just wholesome support. And look, I have to agree with the idea that, okay, yes, when you're young, it's understandable people would have the habit of saying that's not legitimate love. You haven't experienced enough life and wisdom and true love in your life to know what it really is like. And like, okay, is that the same thing you say to someone who, like a child who's depressed and literally suicidal? Oh, you're not suicidal until you've had a nine to five job for 20 years. <laughs> See, I'm helping you with your predicament by implying that life's gonna get worse. If anything, young love is probably the most raw and genuine. It's the most intense because you've never experienced it to that degree before. Now, I don't necessarily believe that's a good thing. If anything, it highlights the fact that it's not so much that you're in love in a mature sense, but more in love in a naive sense. You're not excited about the person, you're excited about the feelings you're suddenly feeling with this person. Like if you're feeling in love with someone after only being with them for like, what, two weeks or something? 
Depending on how often you're being with them, you're not in love with them, you're just in love with the experience of being with someone. And again, I don't mean that's a bad thing, you just gotta understand where you're coming from in that space so you don't really hurt yourself by realizing, oh wait, they're actually not on the same level of love as I am. I'm just an excited puppy while they're more like a cat. But anyway, until that story gets another update and hopefully more vengeance upon Skylar the butthole, we'll end today's stories there. Thank you, as always, for watching in today's videos. If you made it this far, then well done, you get a prize. I'm sending you a puppy that will always love you, no matter what. You will never escape its loving eyes. Remember to drink water, and until next time, I'll see you then. Bye bye